common go-to advice is to avoid politics at the holiday table at all costs when tensions are already running high. But as a political scientist and an aspiring Bond villain, my advice is go hard, balls to the wall, metaphorically speaking, of course. Always feel free to hide various radical propaganda like the U.S. Constitution and stocking stuffers and food entrees, reminding these ungrateful people what country they live in. And when they're shocked and outraged and scream at you, this isn't what I asked for. Remind them of all the ugly sweaters they ever gave you over the years, under the same presumption, along with all their unsolicited, uh, unsolicited opinions about politics and social spheres they clearly know little to nothing about. Overall, it's been a pretty productive year, but as usual, I find myself constantly dealing with the usual flag-sucking half-wits and meme-lording pothead idiots that are currently saturating this new brand of echo chamber idiots who actually think they know much of anything about life or the real world or politics. So in that spirit, I have prepared a speech that I am going to be publishing soon, and it is regarding the First Amendment of the United States of America and free speech. And for anyone who hasn't seen V for Vendetta by now, it's quickly becoming apparent that that movie was a documentary and we may actually be looking at the last generation of free folks. So enjoy it, enjoy it while it lasts. In light of all the bigotry and tropes we normally see this time of year, all year really, but especially this time of year regarding religion and Christianity, I have titled this speech, Mary What? It's no secret by now that many people hate Christianity for their own reasons. I get it, and while I may not agree with you, I would concede the point of cookie-cutter Christians, that is, the flimsy doctrine of progressive Christianity being what it is today. Their mantra is basically, hey man, Jesus gave us like one commandment, bro, to be vaguely nice to each other, man, smoke weed and sing kumbaya together, and pretend all evil doesn't exist. As long as you're being vaguely nice by the cultural standards of the current time period we live in, and completely ignoring the Bible, you're doing a great job, dude. Hero. We're not going to waste time getting into the weeds on every sociological level, trying to bring you out of your pot smoke-induced haze of the 60s, and explain why, statistically speaking, from all the common complaints and tropes about religion, that is likely an MO for you, or why you may have issues with authentic Christians. Your memes you passive-aggressively share with all of us because you can't actually effectively communicate points directly to people, and your negative attitude towards life in general already speak volumes to that. And so, you can pay a therapist to unload that emotional baggage with you, and I wish you the best of luck. This is simply a critique regarding festive greetings and common respect for human dignity. I don't care who you are, there's nothing, culturally or otherwise, stopping you saying happy holidays, nor has there ever been. The only people who have objected have been those who think the entire world is Christian, or should be. Even Jesus said, paraphrased, love thy neighbor, an eye for an eye will leave the whole world blind. He didn't specify love thy Christian neighbor only, obviously. Really sorry, Americanized, non-Hebrew, Aryan race, whites only, Catholic Jesus. Now yes, it may be that in certain limited circumstances, a place where you work or otherwise serve has asked that you not do so. There is actually a good bit of logic to that since the First Amendment guarantees separation of church and state and realizes that there are many people being served by or serving your institution, and a good number of them are obviously not Christian. And hey, that's just fine. Unlike the Marxists who want to kill all gods and make your governments your god over time by getting you accustomed to relying on the powers that be for things like the social assistance programs that you don't actually need because you refuse to work, 
and handout culture, you still have free will in America. For now, limited time only. The point is, there are Jews, Muslims, Hindus, Satanists, Wiccans, on and on and on. There are over 4,000 religions. Christianity is just one of those. Oh, and by the way, there are several sects of Christianity out of the 12,000 plus sects that don't even celebrate Christmas. So for them, the X already marks the spot of Xmas for them. So long as you're not legally engaging in hate speech, a loose definition these days, I realize, or inciting a riot or fear, like yelling fire in a crowded building when there is none, no state has legal right over your tongue. Although I do wish they'd make these dumb chicks put it in their mouths from time to time when posing for all their selfies like Shiva, goddess of death. Point is, if you say happy holidays, then you are still wishing those who celebrate Christmas a happy holiday, since that happens to be the holiday they are celebrating. But you're also wishing people happy Kwanzaa, happy Hanukkah, happy Yule, and so forth. You aren't disincluding or microaggressing people simply by wishing them good fortune. And Christians don't just celebrate Christmas, but are in the midst of Advent and have the Epiphany coming up. And probably, even though this one isn't a religious holiday, because not all of them are, are about to celebrate New Year's as well. So you're wishing them all of those holidays go well. I'm not so sure about all these people, but especially Northerners who already have a reputation for an unrivaled brand of suburban yuppie wine snob rudeness, who can't say simple greetings, even things like good morning. In fact, it's why Southerners, famous for their Southern hospitality, hate us so much. Well, you, specifically. I live here, but I'm from North Carolina. They love people like me there, and can't wait for me to come back someday. And the feeling is mutual. I can't wait to leave New York either. Down south, not extending the common human decency of any greeting is akin to spitting in someone's face, and there's really no excuse for it. Do you have laryngitis? Did you have a stroke or some kind of head injury that damaged your ability to speak, but apparently left your writing and online networking skills, like meme lording and twerking your ass like a dumb bitch on TikTok, intact? Can you not speak or say things in general, or is your disability limited to just these two words? If so, I'm sure you can be helped by a qualified speech and language therapist. Maybe we can set that as a goal for you in 2023. For now, I'm just going to have to assume that you have a mental block or that you have a physical ailment of some sort, preventing you uttering certain combinations of sounds. Jokes aside, whoever you are, I hope you can still enjoy the holidays, whatever holidays you choose to celebrate or not celebrate. Hopefully, at the very least, you can still express your kindness and cheer to others, assuming you have any to begin with, despite your speech problem. And of course, when others give you their sincere greetings and good wishes, you can receive that too. Or not. Snob it up. Be miserable. I really don't care. Best wishes to you, and happy winter solstice. So, that should conclude it for now. Until next time, keep warm, keep each other, and as always, keep rocking. Peace. Peace.